Good afternoon, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of the Memorial of St. Martha. In today's Mass, we pray for all those who have family responsibilities, those who take their family responsibilities upon themselves and bear the burden of making sure their families are stable, are provided for, and are cared for. Pray for them that God may help ease their pressure and the burdens of their lives. I pray for parents, pray for caregivers, I pray for all others who are overburdened by the cares and stresses of life, that God may help ease those pressures and those anxieties. I also want to pray for, for you specifically as you join us today. Pray for all those who may join us later. I ask that God in his in his mercy and kindness may grant you every good grace for every need. I also want to pray today for a dear friend of mine who has her birthday um, dying of Cylon. Pray and ask that God may grant her many more healthy and joyful years and pray for her family. Also pray for Father Bobita who has his 25th anniversary of priestly ordination today. That God may grant him many more graceful years in the ministry of Christ. I pray for all of us who are sick. Pray for those who are struggling. Pray for those who are losing their bearing. Pray and ask that God may provide sufficing grace for those circumstances. I would also like to pray for others who have anniversaries of birthdays. That God may bless you exceedingly. I invite you to bring your intentions. Let us pray together on this feast of St. Martha. Our opening hymn today will be, Holy God, we praise thy name. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter king. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. For the times our faith in you, O God, was faltering. We ask your mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the times we were unable to feel and confirm your love for us, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. For the times we did not respond to you as we should, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that endure forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
first reading is a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to me that you gave me birth, a man of strife and contention to all the land. I neither borrow nor lend, yet all curse me. When I found your words, I devoured them. They became my joy and the circle of merrymakers. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone because you filled me with indignation. Why is my pain continuous, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? You have indeed become for me a treacherous brook whose waters do not abide. Thus the Lord answers me. If you repent so that I restore you in my presence, you shall stand. If you bring forth the precious without the vial, you shall be my mouthpiece. My mouthpiece. Then it shall be they will turn to you, and you shall turn to them. And I will make you towards these people a solid wall of brass. Though they fight against you, they shall not prevail. For I am with you to deliver you and to rescue you, says the Lord. I will free you from the hand of the wicked, and rescue you from the grasp of the violent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I respond to the psalmist. God is my refuge on the day of distress. God is my refuge on the day of distress. Rescue me from my enemies. Oh my God, from my adversaries, defend me. Rescue me from evildoers. From bloodthirsty, bloodthirsty men, save me. God is my refuge on the day of distress. For behold, they lie in wait for my life. Men who come together against me, not for any offense or sin of mine, O Lord. God is my refuge on the day of distress. O my strength, for you I watch. O God, my stronghold, as for my God, may his mercy go before me, may he show me the fall of my, of my foes. God is my refuge on the day of distress. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. says the Lord, you will see and your hearts will leave. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Just give me a minute. Jesus entered the village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, 
Oh, do you not care that my sister has left me to myself to do all the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need only for one thing. Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I hope that uh, today is a better day for you. That's my hope and that's my prayer. And that's what I'm offering God today. Asking that today might um, be a better day. It doesn't matter how it started, but it might be a better day. Um, aligning everything for you, and making sure that you find some peace, some hope, and some comfort. I'll leave you with this thought before I go into my reflection. I'll leave you with this thought to think about. There are several, so many things that will happen in our lives that will happen the way they choose, not as we would wish them to be. They may, let, they may find us, get us confused get us upset, get us angry, even cause us to lose faith. Now when those things happen that you don't want, that you didn't choose, that you find disconcerting, don't waste your energies. Don't waste your energies getting angry, getting upset. Look closely. Look carefully, look cleanly, very, very quickly. Just calm down, don't, don't, don't lose your mind. Just calm down, look carefully, look closely, look cleanly. God is offering you a stream. God is offering you some lifeline. You just don't realize it. It doesn't matter what that thing is. So everything that is gonna happen, may not happen as you want, but if you look closely, if you look carefully, if you look cleanly, you will suddenly realize, wow, there was a lifeline right here, right there, and it was for you. Think about it. Today I want us to focus on, today is the feast of or the memorial of St. Martha, the sister of St. Mary and St. Bernadette, so sorry, so and um, Lazarus. I know we don't have a feast day that we celebrate Lazarus, but he's a saint. So today Jesus visits this house and Martha, whom I consider a very big sister, uh, this family may have seen a lot of misery or a lot of pain and grief in their lives. That's my, that's my take because it does appear to me that their parents may have died early and so Martha may have taken up family responsibilities and if you check it's a, it's unlikely that she was married so she may have even given up the life of marrying to take care of her kid brother Lazarus and her kid sister Martha and so so taking care of the home became a primary responsibility making sure her sister and brother were provided for became everything she wanted to do so, so normally, when you carry the family burden, little things like this rub hard on you because there's a certain expectation of gratitude, there's a certain expectation of recognition of how much you are giving for your sister or giving for your brother. That little things, little um, being ignored like this sometimes could hurt very, very painfully. So I can imagine, and maybe you do too, if that's what you do in your family, that's your role in your family where you are making sure that everyone is okay. You're taking responsibility for everything, all right? Sometimes even denying yourself a lot that you would normally do. You may have had a better life, 
except for the fact that you decided to take that rule. So if, if that's what you do in your life, maybe in your family or in your school or wherever it is you are, in your place of work, little things like this can get to you. They can, they can, they can, they can derail your day and sometimes just change your moods. So Mary is busy, very busy, because that's what she's been doing always. And so she expected that now that they had this guest, that her kid sister Mary would be helping her, maybe clean the dishes, you know, wiping them, and making sure that everything is ready for dishing the food and serving the Lord. Now that's Mary's, that's Martha's priorities. She wants to make sure she she's at her best when she's doing this because this is what she she has gotten used to doing her best is when she's serving when she is taking care when she is being the, the boss maybe the boss maybe the caregiver maybe uh, the controller in charge providing for so that's her that's her that's her go-to place whenever she is doing that she's at her best so she enjoys it now, I don't think that's Mary's suit, strong suit. She does, I'm, I'm not sure she's a caregiver, a care. She, I don't think that's what she likes to do. And so, when the Lord comes, Martha is out there trying to get out of this. She wants to do be the best um, host and provide everything. And she sees Mary as someone who is trying to undermine that because she's not helping her be her best. You could tell. I can only imagine her in the kitchen doing this and looking around to see if Mary was going to show up and she's not showing up. And her temperature is increasing and rising and it's rising and it's rising. And she couldn't hold it any longer. She could no longer hold it. She had to just drop whatever she was doing straight to where Mary was with the Lord, listening to him and says to the Lord, gets him involved. I'm thinking about how many times we feel like we're like Martha, feeling like maybe God doesn't care, maybe your husband doesn't care, maybe your wife doesn't care, or maybe your parents don't care, or maybe your children don't care, or maybe your boss doesn't care enough about what you're dealing with, what you're going through. Now, if you feel like that, it's okay. It's possible that they really didn't take the time to think about the fact that they needed help. But the thing you don't want to do is to do what Mary, what Martha did here. Don't come with a fight. If you need help, learn to ask for help, the way to get help. There are some ways you ask for help and you get a fight because you're asking for help as though you were fighting. I know that there are so many families and that maybe you are like that, where you need help, you expect the other person to know that you need help because you expect the other person to be your mind reader, to read your mind and to know every cue that you give and to read every cue that you give and to get the right cues and provide the right answers or the right responses. I guess that's what Martha was expecting Mary to do. Now, Mary wasn't reading Martha's mind on that day. Her mother was getting her temperature rising until she came in with a fight. Lord, do you not care? That's a charge. Do you not care? That my sister has left me to myself doing all the serving. Tell her to help me. You should do your job by making sure that you teach her the lesson. I've been trying to do this all my life. You should be the one teaching her the lesson. And I'm thinking about how many times we get into things, petty fights like this. And the Lord said, Martha, Martha, you distress yourself and worry about so many things. See, the things that are important to you don't have to be important to everyone. But if you need help, ask for it. I'm sure that's how the Lord was saying the response the Lord was giving to her in, in coded words. But this lesson is a very practical lesson for you too. We will avoid a lot of fights in our families will avoid a lot of quarrels in our families or in our offices in our in, in, with our friends 
if we only learn how to ask help when we need help. And stop presuming that people should read your mind and know what you want and respond and when they don't, don't, then you get into a fight, you get you begin to lash out and you get angry and you spill stuff. That's something that I learned from this woman. When you need help, yes. When you carry the burden of people, you feel the pressure. And sometimes your temper is like that. But if you need help, don't, don't destroy the evening. Just by allowing your temperature to get to a point where you can no longer manage it or control it. That's what happened to Martha. She became, the, she, became she, she singled herself out, fighting everyone else. And I'm sure that was not the evening she planned for. That was not the evening she hoped for. That was not the evening she, hoped, she wanted. So I pray that we may learn these lessons on how to maintain domestic calm and peace in our homes, in our places of work, just by knowing how to seek help and ask it. And by stopping this, this attitude of expecting people to read cues and read your mind and know what's in your mind and act, you say what you want. You ask how you want it. You ask when you want it. I pray that God may help us to maintain our families, to maintain our lives, to maintain our places of work, and wherever we are working with people, that we may learn these very basic and simple lessons. They are valuable, super valuable, and they can help us maintain our temperature and maintain our blood pressure and not allow what happened to Martha here happen to us. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. How glorious is the peace and hope of Christ. Let us pray with hearts set free from foolish doubts or hesitation because we believe in the promise of the one who has called us. For an outpouring of your spirit of truth and faith in the church today that believers everywhere will conform their lives to the pattern of Christ the master let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for nations around the world where freedom of religion is impeded by bigotry and ignorance that people will learn to respect the rights of others, especially their right to worship God as they choose. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mutual respect and understanding between Christians and Jews and followers of Islam, that we may recognize that we are children of one God, who has given us various ways to communicate and interact with him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have entered their last hour on earth, especially those who may die today and die alone because of this virus, that they may feel God's love from their caregivers and find comfort and strength from the community praying for them today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bear the burden of domestic care, those who provide care maybe for their parents, their grandparents, their sick children, their sick husbands or wives, or someone else, that God may ease your burden and free you from the pressures of life and help you find peace in your caregiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those who have died that God may grant them rest and peace that God may bring comfort and strength to their family let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for those who have anniversaries or birthdays today that God may bless their celebrations and give them many opportunities to celebrate even better let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of the living, to whom all are in fact alive, 
grant the petitions we lay before you and the ones we carry every day in our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, we, we pray, the offerings we bring to you on this memorial of St. Martha from the abundance of your many gifts that through the powerful walking of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to, to the gladness of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks father most holy through your beloved son jesus christ your word through whom you made all things whom you sent as our savior and redeemer incarnate by the holy spirit and born of a virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection and so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory as with one voice we are praying. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. The Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and his chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray using the water our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. So we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of that peace. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that ye should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Let us ask grace for spiritual communion. Most gracious God, there are still so many of your children who desire to have you in their homes and in their lives as Mary and Martha and Lazarus were blessed to have you. We beg, dear God, that their desires may yield the benefits of the graces they ask in this sacrament. May they be richly blessed and may their lives be nourished by your blessing and presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, this perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, on this memorial of Saint Martha, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond our telling, may profit us for our salvation and the salvation of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass. Pray that God may watch over, that God may bless you, and that God may keep you. And if you forget anything and everything I said today, don't forget, you remain the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of St. Martha and our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing the song, Abide with me. Abide with me. Abide.
fight with me fast for the even side the darkness deepens Lord with me abide when order help pass fail and comforts flee help of the helpless who abide with me swift so its post steps out life's little day its joys grow dim its glories pass away change and decay in all around i see O thou who changes not abide